Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Paul Hieronymus, and I am the uh, vice chair of the Ohio Distance Learning Association. And um, it's my pleasure to uh, bring to you uh, a great presentation from Polly. Uh, real quick, I just need to do some housekeeping kinds of things here real quick. I'm going to share my screen. And just to uh, remind everybody that Ohio DOA is, uh, is a, we actually have a new uh, membership tier, which is a uh, at, is, is at the participant level, which is 100% free. So it's a very exciting way for more people to be able to be a part of our programming. As a, as a uh, participant, you are able to receive updates and opportunities from uh, content providers and various uh, providers throughout the organization. So we're thrilled to be able to, to announce that. On the bottom of the screen is a small little bit.ly link, which is uh, bit.ly slash Ohio DOA dash member. We also want to remind everybody that uh, we are doing this through Zoom and we're doing that because one thank you uh, to the uh, to the management council for making all this possible for us about the contract that they have done for Zoom in across the state of Ohio. If you haven't realized this, Zoom is a heck of a lot more affordable than you could ever imagine with this project going through your ITC. You can get a pro Zoom account for $10 a year. Holy moly, that is incredible pricing. Uh, that gives us large conferencing capabilities. You're able to do record into the cloud and have that shared throughout the, you know, the st shared storage space allotments for the entire state, which means you get a ton of space available. Uh, and CRCs are available as well, plus active Zoom, Zoom um, support. Plus we also have the ability to have Zoom rooms at a 50% discount as well. So contact your ITC for that. So that's my quick little uh, advertisement for the consortium. And it's now time for me to really turn this over to work to what you really want to see. So all of us in Ohio are used to uh, Polycom as a household name of us because we most of us have been using the endpoints forever. And so we're real comfortable with the, with the term of Polycom. And then many of us have been using Plantonic equipment forever. And so this marriage between these two companies is outstanding. And so we're thrilled to be able to bring the best of both worlds to us that now thanks paul really appreciate it and uh thank you for inviting us so as paul mentioned my name is wes gearhart uh, i'm the regional manager here in ohio for uh poly um and he kind of did my housekeeping up front right when it came down to polycom and uh, plantronics merging uh, uh polycom uh, historically has been a great partner to the k-12 market here in ohio and I thank you for that. Um, that's historically my background. We then merged with Plantronics uh, headsets that actually, many people don't know this, but Neil Armstrong uh, used a Plantronics headset to do his famous line. So uh, it's kind of a perfect marriage here as we start to uh, become partners with many platforms. One of the primary ones is Zoom. Um, many people may not know this, but uh, that's what today is for is to uh, let you know that we have a written partnership with Zoom now. Um, and it is a written partnership between the two companies. It is um, meaning when there is a written contractual partnership that we are their go-to from an endpoint perspective. Um, and I'll go into some of the different part uh, uh, equipment there, but also um, we are developing software together. So when that means the partnership, when it's written and there's contracts there, they're writing the software for some of our, many of our products that go along with that natively. So we'll go into pretty deep dive on that. Um, and obviously the folks on the screen, please uh, engage with us. So there's a gentleman down at the bottom here. His name is uh, uh, Dan Ferguson. He is uh, there in our DC office and he is our briefing manager. So as I'm showing, uh, getting ready to start my slideshow. Dan, I don't know if you want to say hello and kind of introduce yourself. Yeah, more than happy to. So my name's Dan Ferguson. Like uh, Wes said, I'm located in DC, actually just out of DC in uh, a place called Herndon, Virginia. So my role within Poly is exactly that. I manage the experience centers across America. So we have multiple experience centers throughout the US, but um, I'm located here in Herndon. And my role is really just giving that end user experience. So we, we have 
you know, the, the sales team, the, the customers, the clients, the partners, people that just want to see how the top technology suits their environment, how it works and how it can complement their current platforms is, is my role within the organisation. So fantastic to be here with you today and hopefully you walk away knowing that the partnership with Zoom and Poly is strong and it's only just the start. We have some incredible technology and it's only going to get better as we develop with Zoom going forward. But thanks so much for joining. So, so as, as this starts to progress, if things slow down or we get a lull in the conversation, I'm definitely going to turn it over to, uh, to, to Mr. Dan Ferguson because he has a lot cooler accent than I do. So there you go. Um, but so are you guys seeing my, uh, the main presenter screen? We had this before, Paul. We got that right? Okay, good. So I think we kind of went through the house scheme. Polly and uh, is now the, the two companies, Plantronics and Polycom and our partnership with Zoom, we're gonna get into the products, right? So, um, so as we move into this, I'm gonna, you're gonna be seeing a lot of products you may have never seen from Polycom um, in a collaboration space. Most people have only seen maybe our codex that kind of look like this down here in the corner, um, our group series. We have a whole host of products now that we've been releasing over the last few years. And a lot of them specifically this year that are really round zoom, right? Um, and there's different flavors of that. If you look at the, the top left quadrant of your screen, you've got zoom rooms, right? Which is really a native zoom scenario uh, and certified by zoom. Um, and really up until this date, you've had to really have a PC in line. Most people are used to utilizing a PC and they use a camera whether it be one of ours, it's USB, and we'll get into that in the options there that we have. Um, but you've always had to have a PC in line or you do an interoperability license, a 323 SIP license, which a lot of people do to make sure that they can utilize some uh, of our older equipment, um, be in our group series and our HDX. So those have kind of been the mainstay um, and they will continue to grow utilizing that, that desktop um, PC or laptop connection, and we'll show some USB devices. But then you get into some personal devices as well over on the top right that are our headsets, right? So how do I get into a room that maybe I just need a, a webcam, um, one of our USD devices, and maybe a speaker phone or a speaker device or a headset? That's where when you look at Polycom and, and Plantron is coming together and partnering with Zoom, we get that whole portfolio that really nobody else can do uh, in a very high end way. And as you move down to the bottom end, you're getting into our Zoom phone. Um, I know uh, there's multiple phone systems out there, but I will, we don't want to spend a lot of time on this today, but we are one of the only certified phones if uh, you chose to go Zoom phone, which is a phone switch in the cloud with Zoom and our handsets are certified by that. So if you look at our portfolio, there's nobody else in the industry that can do what we do with Zoom. And people would say maybe two years ago, they'd go, you're crazy. I can't believe that you guys have come this far compared to where you were two years ago, maybe even competing with Zoom. And now we're really developing products together, which is really cool for the market and for the users. So that's kind of the overall broad base. We're gonna get into some specific products today that I think are gonna really resonate with the statewide deployment and make your meetings our whole, our whole marketing flow is make, get Mojo back into your meetings. So <laughs> um, I probably won't use that too much today, but we're trying to use that meaning, okay, so you've got, you're utilizing Zoom and you've got webcams or you're huddled around your little webcam on your PC. How do we make that a better experience and a richer experience for you and the users? So, so, so Wes, if I, can, if I can just jump in on that slide there is, especially from an experience center point of view, Traditionally, it used to be the question I would ask is, what size room do you have? What size room, how many people does it, it fit? But if you have a look at that whole portfolio, the question is now, where do your people want to work from? So if you think of it, I can join Zoom from my mobile phone with a headset. I can then transition over to a desk phone. But then I want to turn it into a group collaboration or a, gl a group meeting. I then just go into one of the native devices, one of the room systems where we may have three, four, up to 10 people. Whatever room size you have, all the way down to the individual, Polly has that covered with regards to that Zoom environment. So I just wanted to send that message home. Perfect, thank you, Dan. Keep chiming in, because that's great info. 
Um, and like I told you, he does sound a lot better than me. So, um, <laughs> but I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, so this is a new product that I really want to dive into. And Paul's had the, the luxury of utilizing this a little bit. Um, and this is called our Poly Studio. Uh, really revolutionized the area of webcam and um, USB cam because this, because this came to a point where, hey, users loved Polycom. They loved some of the features that we had, high-end audio, um, um, some, I'll, actually I'll go into some different pieces, some high-end audio. So we've always been an audio company um, and they, they also like some of the noise block, some of the features that we, we can block out some of the noise that's non-voice. Um, we can do Bluetooth to the unit. Some of the things that we really brought to bear as Poly is a high-end enterprise solution, but they wanted it really as a USB device, right? They wanted to use their laptop. They wanted to use their PC. How do I make this? And they might already have a projector or a, a flat screen in the room. So how do we make uh, a space a much more richer environment for the users? And that's where Studio came in. Um, if you look at the unit, it does have speakers on either side. It connects USB to your laptop or PC. And your PC or laptop will connect to the projector or flat panel in the room. This can be mounted underneath it. And it really becomes a, a rich environment at that point. Um, and it does some really unique things that nothing else in the market does. Um, so what it will do is we'll not only do speaker framing when people come into the room, it'll make sure it frames, but it actually does some of the cool unique features that the people love from Poly, and that is speaker tracking. So it'll do true speaker tracking. When people speak, it'll go to them and then pull back out. Actually, Paul had the, the luxury of using this in some of one of his classrooms. And it, it does a really nice job. It, is, it fits a price point that people can really roll out at a, at a, at a large scale. This is list price 995. So really 995. So there's really, uh, from a USB device rolling this out, it creates an enrich, uh, immersive environment through your laptop. And, and it's really a game changer for, for the market. Um, I don't know if Dan, you wanted to add anything else into that piece? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I happen to be using the device now. So I'm sitting in front of a studio. The studio is this device here as well. I know you're only able to see me on a small sort of screen there, but it's, it's, it's a very robust looking device. It's, it's fantastic. It sits either underneath your monitor on a table. It can be mounted by a Visa mount using your TV mounts, or you can also mount it on the wall. So some of the things I always talk about with this device is that, again, it enhances that meeting experience. I've got a laptop. Most people have laptops. We walk around and we try and find a quiet space in our environment to sit and conduct our meetings. With this though, we're now enhancing that. So no longer do three or four people have to sit around your, um, your PC and yell into the audio device and, and rely on the webcam. This is built for a huddle space. So it's, it's got a fantastic pickup range of 12 feet. That's the room size we talk about. It's, it's not designed for your large executive boardroom or anything like that. A great huddle space unit where I walk in with my laptop, I can join any of the meeting platforms that you may have. But Zoom is definitely one of those. Because it's running on your PC, I then need to attach a HDMI cable, which is gonna replicate my screen onto the monitor. I then attach a USB cable, which then takes over the audio and microphones of my PC. As we spoke about, what other enhancements do we have? We have that tracking of the talker and the group framer, but I can also turn all framing off and I'll, I'll quickly do it now on my device. If I don't, but twice, and it, it can go into full room view. So that's now tracked me as the person that's talking. If I turn that tracking back off, it'll go back out into group framing. So it's, so it's incredible how it's gonna do it. But again, what have I got to do as a user? I've got to walk in, I plug two cables in, I sit back, then allow the technology to take over and do everything it, it needs to be. With regards to management, this can be managed via Wi-Fi. So no longer does the IT team have to run down and push software updates, et cetera. That can all be done 
via Wi-Fi, and it also has its own privacy shutter. So again, here's the privacy shutter that sits underneath, and you can see the red spot, so I'm just trying to make sure it's not glaring from the lights. But that's the Poly Studio, a fantastic, easy to deploy, easy to move from one classroom to the other, if need be, at a short notice. It needs power, and the rest is just those two cables that go to your PC. Can I ask a quick okay. question? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So the virtual Zoom, which I think is a, is, I think is, is just amazing for for a classroom teacher, because in the past we've had that ability to have a remote and have Zoom. But let's face it, when you're active involved in a in a class that you're teaching, that's just one of those things that you're like, oh, I wish I would have zoomed, or I wish I would have moved, or yeah. I would have done something with that remote. Um, and that virtual Zoom seems very exciting as a way of kind of making that be a a game changer as far as the way it. The lessons being delivered. What is it? How is it zooming though? Is it doing it based off yeah. of my audio, or is it using you know face face capture technology? And I'm sure I said that wrong, but uh, uh, face recognition. No, no. So, so you, you've identified a couple of points. So again, I'll try and lift this up. But you can see, you can see the raised lip on the edge there. It has microphones built into it. So essentially, what it's smart enough to do, and we've taken this technology from our most expensive camera and put it into one of our cheaper USB um, alternatives. Those microphones are there to detect voice. So it detects voice, but before it zooms in on you as the person or the direction that the voice is coming from, it identifies eyes, nose and mouth. Because think about that, I could sit a speaker in the centre of the room where there's voice coming from. We don't want the camera to zoom in on that speakerphone. So it's smart enough to differentiate between a human and a speakerphone by identifying eyes, eyes, nose, mouth. It then zooms in on the person that's talking. The other feature that we have there is you can set it to different speeds, so it can be slow, medium, and fast. So at no stage do you want the teacher to be doing most of the delivery and a student then says, hey, sir, and then it quickly switches across to them. So it's, it's, it looks for you know, three to four seconds of delivery then it will switch in between the individuals that do talk. So that's, that's tracking of the, the speaker. What is that getting rid of? Exactly what you spoke about there, Paul. It's getting rid of me needing to, oh, sorry, Johnny wants to ask a question. Let me zoom over to Johnny. And if you're like me, I've never gone the right direction the first time. And I'm seeing heads nod and smiles because we've all been there and it's... Uh, it's, it's not great to keep the momentum of the meeting rolling. So, th so that's actively tracking the speaker, and that's how it does that. Perfect. Did that answer the question, Paul? Great. So, so how, how, about, how about this? Sorry. How about yeah, this? What happens if someone starts to open a bag of chips during a meeting? And you should be able to hear those bags of chips rustling away. What's what happens once they stop talking? And give me a thumbs up when it happens. So that's what's known as noise block. It's the ability to block out those non-human noises, such as a bag of chips being opened, someone tapping away on a keyboard, um, you know, shuffling a paper, etc. It's all those non-human noises that bring meetings to a screaming halt where someone either has to mute that person, someone I'm has to up. ask them to mute themselves. I'm me up right now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or, or, we, or we gently remove them from the meeting. So again, think of, think of that as noise block, and that's an additional feature which just comes with this device. The other one with this device is that it has what's known as acoustic beam. Essentially, we can set up parameters of where we want sound to be heard and not be heard. And those degrees from the camera is at 60, 90, and 120 degrees. So again, you could sit this in an open space where you may have students outside the, the boundary fence talking away, but they will not be heard going through to the far ends video. So two, two great technologies that come built in with our devices, noise block, and the second one was acoustic fence. Perfect. So, so as we're on the USB side, and you're not seeing my content anymore, right, folks? I wanted to make sure that he, he's been, okay, good. Um, so I wanted Dan to go a little bit further into some of the USB devices. Since we're really on USB right now, uh, utilizing bring your own device, 
he brought some other components there. So if he brought them over there, we should be showing them. Um, so, uh, so all of our cameras, uh, so we're on the studio, all of our cameras from, from the cube, maybe you can go a little bit into that, Dan, maybe you can go a little bit into your director. Some of your folks may have seen our director, uh, that's sitting next to him, the two camera high ends, uh, type of cameras, but that's really been used in a lot of education spaces. Most people don't know that that could be used as a USB device now. So you could really have rich high-end auditorium tracking um, with a, as a USB device now through that director. So, And Dan's going to show you a, a, a version of the studio that's smaller called the Cube as well. So Yeah. So I've mistakenly moved my Cube to the other room, but I actually have one sitting directly here. So this is another camera. So if you look at... If you look at the camera that's contained within studio, here's a USB camera that can also complement your video conferencing systems, whether that be a PC or some of the other devices I'm gonna show you shortly. 4K camera, five times digital zoom. Again, it has the privacy shutter down the bottom. It has its own built-in microphones off to the side. So again, it allows you to do the same features that the studio has, which is tracking the speaker, group framing, or setting presets for that. But again, highly flexible camera that uh, we believe is going to change the market with, in essence, the, the 4K capabilities and how clear that can be. So with 4K capabilities, think of, you know, something as simple as showing documents or, um, you know, having, having students artwork positioned throughout the room and the ability to be able to show that to the far end to greater detail and we're seeing a lot more requirement for that that high-end um, sort of document cameras as such mm -hmm. so that that's the cube and that's that's something that's new to poly now one of our mainstays one of our, our largest cameras that we have is what's known as the eagle eye director 2 and you can see that it's got two cameras that are spinning around this is where the technology for the speaker tracking has evolved from. So this is our highest end camera that I spoke about. And we go all the way down to our studio. That technology has flowed down through our portfolio. Again, it has microphones in the base as well as the vertical array. That's how it detects the person that's talking. Now this is a lot smoother than some of the other technologies because we have two cameras. So whilst this camera on the right hand side is detecting and, you know, let's say capturing the video of someone talking, at the same time, if someone else talks, this camera starts to look for them. And then it's a quick switch between the cameras. It's not the traditional zoom across the room, zoom back. It's switching in between. And it's incredible how it does it. What it also does at the same time is think about this. Is I'm in a boardroom and I'm the person sitting at the head of the table. I'm delivering content and I've been talking for 20 minutes. One of those cameras is going to focus on me. But what's most important to the far end audience is who else is in the room with me? Are they paying attention? Are they on their phones? Who is my audience? What content do I deliver? What do I need to watch what I say, etc. That camera has what's known as a picture on picture, which is a picture of the full room that sits down the bottom right hand corner. So think from a perspective as whilst I'm the main uh, presenter, you're also able to see the other participants on the right hand corner and uh, extremely powerful, extremely powerful. It is a USB camera. So again, it can be used with your PC and some of the other solutions that I'll show you shortly. The beauty of what I'm showing you is that you just forget about the technology. Walk in, join your meeting, sit back and allow your own, let's call it film crew to look after the video. And then you have the microphones, whether they be on the table or in the ceiling. So that's your audio team that looks after that. You just need to worry about what he's being delivered, what the students are doing, and what the students should be doing. Perfect. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, if, if, uh, yeah, I know that I've been in this industry for a long time, and I've watched it evolve. Um, and that type of product, we came out with that many, many years ago, our first version. It's evolved to this version. We've now moved this to USB. We've had people that have tried, uh, organizations that have tried to copy that unit. We've continued to evolve it. And, uh, it, and now that it's USB, it really changes the game that you can utilize your own devices with it. Most people don't know that. Um, so we wanted to make sure to highlight that. One hey, other Wes, thing I wanted to make I think sure- Tom we might have a question. 
Yeah, uh, thanks, Paul. Um, just in terms of the the Eagle Eye Director Two, what you said, um, there's microphones built in. So what's the range of those? And then if it was, are you also saying that it also could plug into some other kinds of room microphone system? Or tell us a little bit more about that. So, so the the effective range of that device is 33 feet. So you can be 33 feet away from that device and it will capture you. We actually know it goes a little bit further, but our specifications are 33 feet. The beauty of this camera also, and I'll, I'll quickly um, allude to this, is you can cascade two of these camera units together. So think about this is that whilst I'm standing at the front of the room, this camera might be positioned directly behind me. So as I talk, it's not going to be able to capture me because so, it can't see my eyes, nose and mouth. So you can position a secondary camera unit at the back of the room. So as I'm presenting, the camera at the back of the room captures me. One of the students asks a question, the camera at the front of the room can capture the audience and they're smart enough and we pair them over network. So just know that there's a, a level of flexibility with two of these units to position wherever you need them in the room, depending on the room size, et cetera, because it's a powerful camera and it, it won't suit every room and it's, it would be overkill for a small room that is certainly suited to an auditorium, a classroom, or a larger conference room. Now, the microphones built into this device aren't there to send um, audio to the far end. The microphones are only there to detect and identify where the speech is coming from. So with regards to your other system, where the audio would need to come from, that, that could be your PC audio. It could be another microphone that you have positioned throughout the room. And that, and that would really come down to the use case for that room. So to add on to that, Tom, we've seen many times, you see the, uh, the ceiling microphone that's hanging behind Dan uh, right now. Uh, we developed that product and it's actually been copied in many ways as well because it's a really neat uh, sphere uh, product. So that we've seen many times on auditoriums, they might put those throughout the room, a couple of them, because uh, they do a 30 foot range to capture the students and then have a director up front and then they might have an, an audio system already in place, right? So, um, and, and then we can add a Kodak if you wanted to have a Kodak, or if you don't, you don't need to have that. So, um, hopefully that answers that question for you. Perfect. Yeah, thanks. And actually, uh, um, we have a technician that's been talking to me, and he's been asking me questions about how do you handle the auditorium where you know you're trying to get the question, you're trying to capture. So he's going to be real thrilled to hear about this. So I'll share that with you. Yeah. This is a little hidden secret, right? Most people don't know about that unit because any of the other competitors, you have to buy their highest end codec in order to make that work. You don't have to do that within within Poly. So if, if that's something, I, Tom, I'm right down the road uh, from you in, in Canton. So if you want to have a discussion off the, off the cuff uh, or mm -hmm. after this, let us, let us know, please. Great. I'm going to chime in too. And uh, I stream a, a meeting that is uh, Southwest technology integration leaders of Ohio. And you think it's like going to the moon. It shouldn't be as difficult as it is. I do have participant questions. It's, it's more of a, uh, it's a forum is what it is. And it is everything I can do to um, establish an audio bridge through the ca uh, the camera system. Um, to be recording, to be streaming live. I've got three mics. Um, one's a stick mic. I'm running around like a fool. I'm supposed to be uh, intelligently directing the conversation and everything, and, and it's all I can do most of the time. Um, this just is absolutely a game changer for me. This would be everything I'm trying to do and more. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think yeah. you already know this, that the need is here, and uh, boy, I, I'm just, I've got stars in my eyes. That's great to hear. Thank you for the feedback. Kathy, your language is no different to what I hear on a daily basis is we, we had technology that was incredible, but it becomes so complicated that the return of investment, people didn't use it, we become scared of it, it become obsolete. So I think what you're seeing from Polly is everything's going back to simplicity because the key word is simplicity, simplicity to organize, simplicity to deploy, but most importantly, to actually use. So for you, like, I, I get it. I've come from a teaching background. I, I just want to set and forget, hit record, and then allow the content to flow with the questions from the audience as well as the presenter. The technology takes a backward, you know, step and allows everything else to flow naturally. So I mean, I'm excited. It's a 
crushing that it should be so difficult, but but it really is. Um, I always say this. Um, I used to uh, live in Vermont, and I took distance learning classes through University of Vermont. And we would go to the public radio stations and literally have producers, and they yeah. would do exactly these things. And this was like uh, 1990. And I think, gosh, we've not done anything since then. Nope. So this is really the closest I've seen to it. So, and I can't have a producer. Like I would love to, I'd love to have a customer service manager. I'd love to have a producer. I'd love to have a personal assistant. I don't have any of that. And so um, again, in what way are, is technology streamlining administrative tasks <laughs> just like this? So, and automating yeah. them, you know, more than that. Because, you know, the cognitive load on somebody presenting, I, you know, we're all teachers here. I think no other profession has the cognitive load as a teacher does. Um, to be managing or a, a person who's running the meeting. And so anything that you can do to scaffold or support that is um, obviously going to, like you said, put your mojo back in your meeting. So, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I have a quick question too, Ru, as we start, because I'm, you know, there's, as we look at the different ways that um, the technology is being used, one, one of the things we always want to keep in mind too is our classrooms that are being designed for the future. So many of our schools are building new schools. And we're looking at ways of can we integrate distance education concepts into those rooms, uh, but probably can't afford to buy two of that double camera system. Where, how would, what would be the best configuration for a classroom as we're in the design phases of thinking about those pieces? Would it be in the, those in the back of the room, those in the front of the room with a, with a single camera in the back? What would be the combination that would probably make the most amount of sense with Zoom as as it's you know as the um, the key piece to bring it on. Yeah. Wes, did you want no, to that's that? Fine. I, you know, Paul, I've seen it both ways. Um, so I've seen it many times. We'll, we we'll put the director up front for the students because that's where you're going to be doing a lot of uh, um, a, a lot of you know uh, movement and different tracking that's needed, and then maybe have a fixed camera in the back one of our 12X Zoom cameras that could sit in the back, um, much less expensive than that director, but still gives you a real deep feature rich unit as a USB device and can sit in the back of the room. And that could be, you know, kind of preset for the front of wherever that instructor is. So we've seen it both ways. Sometimes I've, I've seen instructors that like moving around, like to have people up. So we've seen it both ways. There's no, there's no um, exact feature, but we've, you know, Many times we'll have a rear and a front scenario. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, Dan it's, showing you, and that, that's a great segue a little bit, Dan showing you really if you just wanted one of our 12X Zoom cameras as a USB device, we do have that, right? Rich 12X, Z, uh, 12X camera, Eagle Eye camera as a, a USB device as well. So a little yeah, bit. The other, yeah, the other thing I would say is, we have we have incredible camera systems that will do all the tracking and everything for you. We, we can also simplify that as well. We, we can set presets for a lot of our cameras where you turn the camera tracking off. On a toggle, turn it off. And if you know that the presenter is going to stand at the podium, if she's then going to move over to the whiteboard and then move to the back of the room, the head of the table, you, you can prefigure, or yeah, that's the, that's the right word. You can put nine presets there so you know x marks the spot hey move to one move to two move to three and as we know there's there's no there's no set style for teaching we we move we either stand we some people use their hands some people have their hands in their pockets but you know just, just know that we have the capabilities to have presets as well as track those individuals throughout the room as they talk So one thing as we're at the kind of table, as we move on from the USB devices, because I'm looking at the, the time and I think we're going to take the hour, Paul. So, um, but I, as, as we, um, as we move on from there, one of the unique things also on the, we mentioned the studio as one of the first things we talked about. And uh, we did the test with, I think, was it you, Paul, that we did the test with the Chromebook and that was unique, right? To the studio was, one thing, not to get, I don't want to get too speeds and feedsy here, but we do the drivers within our unit that make it work. So one of the nice things about the Chromebooks is they're inexpensive and you can really roll them out to a lot of students. One of the downsides is there's not very much processing power within that unit. And a lot of these cameras that make drivers work for, on your PC to make it do some of these things uh, don't work in the Chromebook. 
it does in a studio. I think Paul can attest to that. We did, we did try that as well. So just give you an idea uh, of that, um, of what we do there. I'm going to move on from the USB devices, if that's okay, because there's some really cool things we uh, are going to get into next. Um, if, if, I guess from a nod and okay and uh, thumbs up, are we okay with that? Cool. Um, I'm going to share screen again. And let me get to share. Bear with me, folks. Okay. Should be this hard, but you guys seen the presenter's feed now? Perfect. Okay, good. Um, so this is a new product we just came out with as well. There's still a lot of users out there that love our codex. Um, our group series or our HDX, our group series, they do SIP and 323. A lot of users are not going to move away from that, but they wanted a new platform. So we came out with what's called our G7500. Um, and it was really built because it needed better processing to do some of the neat things that we're getting ready to do. Um, and we are doing now. So I'm going to be talking about the next few features, the next few products are really new in this industry. This is the first one and it is shipping now. Um, it's called our G7500. It is a true codec. It does SIP 323, has 4K camera options. And as you can see, you can do the cube. I'll move to the next slide. You can do the cube here on the left. You can do the Eagle Eye 4, and you can go up to the Eagle Eye 12 that people are used to seeing. And it will do your SIP 323 type of environments. But one really neat thing underneath this hood, and why we wanted to develop a new platform form for this was it can be Android based and it we can run zoom room in it okay so if you want to have a larger space or you have a true Kodak need um, or you're replacing a Kodak and you want it to really be a native zoom room experience the G7500 is now running zoom software under the hood natively that you no longer need a PC to work okay so I want to take a minute and let that pause you no longer need a pc to work this anymore um that's where i mentioned the written partnership with zoom and that what that means is when it's in zoom mode um you are truly speaking to the zoom cloud and our provision there and their software is running there on this unit so i want to make that very clear um as we say we've got multiple cameras here i think dan's got is connecting from one right now am i right dan yeah, I've just moved into a different room now, so I disconnected. This is a native device, so walked in, I had the, the whole Zoom experience. I am seeing a little bit of, um, I'm having a little bit of network issue here, but the audio should be fantastic, but it's, it's a very simple device, and think of it as just loading an app. We've just loaded the Zoom app. So I walked into the room, I've got a, a, a tablet that has the Zoom interface. I've also got a the Zoom controller, the Zoom sort of um, display at the front of the room, which says this room is booked, this room is available, next meeting is. So it's truly that Zoom experience, which is um, fantastic. So you're also getting with this platform, you're getting true roster, you're getting all the features that you want. You get whiteboarding, you get all those features that you love yeah. about Zoom, and it's natively a Zoom device. No more kind of hoping, th hoping you can get the PC connected right and cables everywhere. So, and, and, and from a management point of view, you know, you don't need to manage a PC anymore. So previously to this, and as my, as my lights just went off, was, um, you know, the, they would have to manage the device. Then they would also have to manage the, the PC that's in the room. So, you know, for a lot of IT and, um, you know, organizations, that, that was a, a very much a negative. And then you couldn't control when certain updates were pushed to the PC, et cetera. So, you know, th those sort of things are all things to consider. But this is a, a native, or it's, it's a device that can be turned into a native Zoom uh, environment. So we really needed to address users that were large polycom users, have historically loved our codecs, and really needed to come in with a product like this that could do exactly what we mentioned, be a Zoom room, under the hood, a new codec. 
What I'm about ready to show you just got announced last week or two weeks ago at Zoomtopia. So they are not, these are the ones I'm, the G7500 right now is shipping. Um, um, the next products will be shipping here toward the end of the year, but I really want to make sure you show this because this just kind of doubles down on this Zoom room scenario. And this is what's called our Poly X Studio X series. And we started this whole discussion with our studio, which is a USB device, right? Um, and we saw that that really take off. Users said, hey, I love it. It's exactly what we wanted. Um, it fits our, our huddle spaces, our medium sized rooms, but I still really, really don't wanna have my PC. And I still want a really good price point, period. Um, and Polly said, okay, um, We've already developed this platform with G7500 for larger spaces or true codec. We're gonna build a sound bar that does the same thing uh, or a video bar that does the same thing. So hence the Poly X series. Um, so as you can see um, on the screen here, there's two versions of it. There's the X30 and the X50. Uh, I'll go into some details about both of them, but they are able to run SIP 323 in a mode or most users in this and what Zoom really loved about this uh, and actually the CEO and founder of Zoom presented to all of us uh, globally here when we first announced this is it is a Zoom native app on this, okay? So just like the G7500, you are running the app on each of these bars, there's no more PCs, it's a, it's, it's a microphone, um, it is an audio uh, system there for local and it's running the app on the screen. Um, so gets away from PCs, much like the G7500, but it's an all-in-one bar. Um, why native? Um, this is perfect timing with what's going on in the state of Ohio. I got all kind of ex really excited. I've been in the video industry for a long time. I've known Paul for a very long time. I've known the management council team for a long time. And when I heard that they were announcing Zoom going to everybody, I'm like, if this lines up, this is gonna be so cool, right? Because um, these products are gonna be shipping here in December. We're taking our first orders um, in late November on these. So the timing's really aligning for early next year. Um, and it's exciting. So, like I said, whiteboarding um, covered. Um, you've got um, all the roster and all the experience that you get from native covered with these units. You've got simple setup. Literally, if you go onto YouTube and look up X Studio X 30 and X 50 setup, it will show you how easy it is to do. You literally plug it in if it's in Zoom mode and it will provision itself and talk to the cloud and you're off and running. And it feels exactly like a Zoom room, right? Um, so minimal cables and you're up and running. Because we wanted to make sure that it really did get the Zoom room feel, it is shipping with our touch screen. Right, so you're able to see roster, you're able to move people in and out, uh, one touch dial, all the pieces that you would want to really get a Zoom room feel. Um, so that is, that is packaged and ships with those. You don't have to get it with it, but if in a Zoom scenario, I really believe it's important. So can I, can I, just, can I just jump in there? I, I just wanna make sure everyone's aware of the magic that one touch dial is. Does, is everyone familiar with one touch dial? No. Okay. okay. So, yeah. thank you, Dan, for stopping. That's perfect. So, think of think of one touch dial as I simply send the invite. So, from my Outlook client, my email, I invite personnel. So, I invite Wes, I invite Paul, Kathy, and what I would then do, I would also invite the room system. So, I'd, I would invite that device. So, when I walk into the room to start my class, no longer do I need to grab the touch pad and type in this long email address and all these aliases and all this sort of stuff. I walk in there and it'll have Dan Ferguson, K1 to 12, you know, webinar. I would hit join and it dials in and starts the meeting on its own. So they say that most meetings take 13 minutes to start because of the 
the complications that come with starting meetings. I've, I've got to set up my classroom. I, I hit the wrong number. It doesn't dial in probably. So again, one touch dial, the ability to walk in, press one button that says join and it dials in automatically. That is what one touch dial is. So to take stress you want away to see from me lose my mind. Talk to me about 10 minutes before the meeting starts. Go ahead. Try and talk to me 10 minutes before the meeting starts. You want to see somebody losing their mind. Great. <laughs> Yeah. Well, hopefully what we're talking about here, Kathy, can change that because we found that really if you don't make it within two clicks, it starts to break down, right? Uh, people's, and, and so what Dan's mentioning is people are used to going in and doing an Outlook calendar invite or, or some kind of a calendar invite, and they're sending the Zoom, Zoom meeting out to users. What you do is give that calendaring to the actual unit in the room to where you're inviting that unit. It sees an invite and it shows that you have a meeting and you just hit click to join. And so Wes, real quick for us in the Google world, um, that's then adding the Zoom room as a resource in, in, in the calendar system, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yep. You, your devices are just gonna have an email address where you send that email address to it, it then just calendars from there. So that, that, that's what the science behind is. It is we're not changing the workflow of any of the teachers, any of the, the lecturers, the instructors, or even the students. They're used to sending emails and invites out to personnel using the plugin of Zoom. You're then just asking them to invite a room system and, and you name those room systems so they're identifiable. You know, so it might be classroom A, classroom B, et cetera. So they're aware of who they're inviting. So a crazy question I want to ask you here then is many of our schools are moving to interactive panels and instead of throwing a, you know, little webcam on there and have, you know, poor video, is this something that we could have be a portable solution to be able to have a classroom teacher be able to connect this to their ViewSonic, CleverTouch, whatever um, yep. touch screen panel and have everything we would want to have of a true interactive panel experience, but have the video conferencing piece be built into it. Yeah, absolutely. Not having to be worried about the specs of the panels PC. That's exactly right. So that's the, that's what we see here. As if you can, as you as you look at this, uh, all the the, re, the all the audio and the pieces that we talked about before are part of this, but also part of this is covering touch sensitive devices. So if you bought if you bought a ViewSonic, if you bought something that's touch sensitive, it's going to be able to cover that as well. So, you know, whiteboarding and all that's going to be in there and we support touch screens. So that's a really unique feature with this unit. So many people that already have maybe a projector or a monitor, this is perfect for it. If you are putting in uh, some touch monitors, th this is just an enhancement to that. Right. It's oh, Paul, I've, it's my understanding that Clever Touch it has Zoom integrated to it as well. Yeah, but but then one of the things that I've always concerned us with that is we've tried them with some of the Clever Touches or some of the ViewSonics, and we found video lag. Okay. So I love the idea of not having to upgrade the RAM on each of those mm -hmm. built-in PCs, uh, having the ability to um, be able to have this piece be able to just add on and run separately just sounds fantastic to me. Yeah. Paul, you so, and I have to talk after. So you, you, Paul, you're really resonating. What we found is these all-in-one systems that are really, are, have been really fit, fit in need. Um, we found that users have had issues, like I said, keeping up with the maintenance of those PCs in it. And they really just wanted something that would just run an Android app and, and work. And that's why we came out with this. So we've got you covered both ways. Let's say, hey, I, I just want to use the PC that's in there and I needed a better camera, right? Uh, I could, you could put the studio on that and just do USB to that unit, right? Or you could do, hey, I, I don't want to manage this PC anymore. I love the touch screen. I'm just going to go ahead and buy one of these extra. So we got you covered both ways, uh, depending on which way you want to go. Um, this also... So it does automatic framing and tracking, just like the studio, right? So, um, so there, there, there's a new feature which we just brought out, and then I showed you noise block earlier. And noise block was, it's that ability to block out non-human noise when there's no human voice. So you will notice that when I stopped talking, you could no longer hear the chips. But as soon as I opened 
and started talking again, the microphone's open, you can hear it. There's a new product, or it's a new feature with these products, is it's called Noise Block AI. And it's the ability for me to be shaking the chips, rustling the paper, tapping away on the keyboards and talking at the same time, and it blocks out that non-human noise. It doesn't affect speech. You just won't hear those chips being rustled or the keyboard being tapped. An example of that is um, one of our, one of our, I'll say our evangelist. He has a video, he's got a ninja blender where he's blending food whilst talking on video and you cannot hear the ninja blender. Yeah, it's uh, mind blowing. So as we move into this, all the rich things you used to with Polycom uh, and historically with being, hey, I buy an appliance um, and now I wanna be able to get in software updates, that's continuing with these products. That's not changing. That's the beautiful thing is when new features came out over the last you know, 10 years, people could still use that group series and just update it and we would continue to give updates. We're gonna be doing that same thing on all these products that we're showing here. So um, rest assured, these things that uh, the AI and other things that we will be developing um, when the market asks for it, we will be coming out with maintenance releases that will allow you to just enhance your system. So what we're talking about is just a brand new platform that, that is lining up perfectly with the state of Ohio. So it's pretty exciting. Um, uh, so as we talk into this and the speaker tracking, we're covered there uh, in, in group framing. Okay, so how do we deal with content, right? What do we do there, right? Content's cool, Can content's king, we need that. Um, well, we've got HDMI and we can connect wirelessly to it. So, and do content sharing in the space. Um, so that, that's very key. Um, uh, and then infinite whiteboarding. So you do have whiteboarding uh, along with this, touch sensitive that you're able to interact with that we talked about before. So really gives you a very unique play with rooms that already have projectors or monitors. You just really want to do a zoom room and you want it to be native and you want to have a feel and a one touch dial with it. So, and, and here's the really crazy part. If you've been in this industry for a while, um, the X studio, uh, I don't know if I, do I have this on this. Oh, I'll go to the next one. So the X 30 is MSRP with the touchscreen 21.99 and the uh the uh, medium size x50 is 34.99 that's msrp it's not street price so when i really look at that all you're getting with that compared to where you used to be even i mean that that changes everything right um and i'm trying to to make sure we get pricing that's kind of uh, i'm trying to track these for the state of ohio through the management council so uh, you know, I'm trying to work with, through a few partners and maybe we can talk offline, Paul, like CDW and some other folks that try and streamline this so we can make sure we capture this and th this project with the state of Ohio. So we can maybe talk about that offline, but these price points were built and, and really leveraged by Polly to say, we're banking on this expanding, right? we're willing to put our money where our mouth is and cut the prices on this. So users can start to really, really buy a lot of them and get them out in the market. So versus where we were even two years ago, right on price. So um, that's exciting to me uh, with all the features you're getting with this and the price it's, it, it's pretty cool. Um, so these are brand new units. Like I mentioned, they will be shipping and uh, they will be shipping in, um, I think the latter, latter part of this this uh, this calendar year, but for sure, really starting to push out the first quarter of next year. Um, so, along with those units, we are support services have always been a mandatory piece within Poly. Uh, your first year, you always have to do it. I am never going to tell somebody they shouldn't do that because it really gives you some nice things. It goes down, we ship it back. If it's a you know. Uh, software update, you're going to get that and things like that. But what we found is, hey, this is going to be attaching to Zoom and really just now an endpoint for a lot of our customers. They might not want to do that since they probably will be getting software from Zoom. It's no longer mandatory. So you can buy this without it. 
Customers really like that. I would never say you should, you know, advocate for that, but some customers really just don't want to do that. And we're at the price point, they're saying, hey, I'm willing just to have one on 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 standby, right? So versus an ongoing cap, uh, ongoing OPEX cost. So that's a really unique thing for Poly. We kind of broke the mold on that. As you can see, we're breaking the mold on a lot of things that you're used, used to seeing. Um, when you look at mounting, there's multiple mounting options on that. It go above and below the unit. Um, uh, the expandability on the X50 uh, for a microphone, there will be an expandable microphone coming in next year. So that, that isn't right out of the gate. Um, but these are platforms that are, we're going to keep building on. So like I said, as you know, we usually keep our platforms for, I don't, I don't speak for product management, but the HDX lasted a good eight to 10 years and they're still even in the, in, in the market. Now you got group series that have been out there almost 10 years. So we really build a platform and then we continue to expand. So that's what I think you're going to see from studio. Um, so as we get into this and we're getting right at the hour, I, hopefully we showed you that we give you a full interoperability, full portfolio that nobody else can really do. And some really cool new things that hopefully you didn't know we were doing here at Poly after today. Uh, now you do. Um, I am going to um, here obviously thank you and thank you for always supporting um, Polycom in the state uh, and Poly. There's my email. Um, please jot down. I'm here. I'm in Canton, Ohio. Um, so I'm you know I'm out and about a lot, and I'm happy to meet with folks in your area. I'm trying really to track this uh, rollout so that we can make sure we're, we ha we understand all the orders and what and what projects are happening because we're very sensitive to it here at the state of Ohio. Um, along with that, Paul should be sending out to you, uh, or if you email me, we are doing a Top Golf event next week. I know it's short notice on Tuesday in Columbus, right off of Polaris. We're going to be having some lunch. If you like golf, you can hit some golf balls, but we are going to have one of the X series there, which is really cool. So that are in, uh, around uh, the country, but we kind of raised up this op this this project, in the state of Ohio, and I wanted to get one. So if you go ahead and I think Paul shot that out, or if you want to email me, I can shoot out the invite. And if you register, grab something to eat, take a look at one of these. Very low pressure, um, but it, that will be next Tuesday, um, the twelfth. I think that's Tuesday. all my days are running together. So, um, but thank you so much uh, for for being part of this. Thank you. Paul. Thanks, Wes. And uh, yes, I will be sending that uh, that email out uh, uh, hopefully uh, first thing tomorrow morning. I'm sorry I did not get a chance to get it out today, but uh, that'll be sent out to the uh, general listserv of the Ohio DOA, as well as all the participants in today's session, everyone who signed up. So we'll make sure that that gets out there uh, because we do have some New York people who are uh, uh, joining with us as well. Uh, many of them are seeing the recordings uh, through a partnership that we're developing with uh, with the New York OCs. So right. uh, trying to make yeah, trying to bring 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 things a little more expanded out there as well. So uh, all I can say is though, wow, what a great uh, clustering of great things that that, that are that, that are to come, as well as things that are already out there ready for us to take advantage of. And I really thank you for this. And I think we're going to be able to see you again uh, through, later in the year for some uh, some more updates of an exciting thing. So thank you so much for that. And I'm gonna go ahead and just stop our recording.